What is good, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Team COG. And today I'm showcasing you guys what to do when you open your brick, the Colt Wing. So we're sh throwing off the dice here and uh, I end up losing the dice roll and uh, he ends up going first, which is okay. Uh, as expected, you know, this is a format of going first and everything like that, etc. cetera. Uh, so he ends up doing something very interesting, very interesting indeed. He sets one, sets two, and then passes to me. And in my hand, I have Colt Wing here. Uh, so, but I actually have the best play for this, believe it or not. So I go Twin Twisters, pitching the Colt Wing to get rid of it, but he calls by the grave the Colt Wing. And uh, normally when you open Colt, you want to get it to the graveyard. Uh, but since he we got to the graveyard, he had called by. We're going to be playing without Colt more than likely for the rest of the game. However, I'm going to start my turn by Special Summoning Red Layer and the Normal Summon Connector. Connector is going to get us out the Dolphin. And we're going to get to see a look at his hand. I have no idea what he's playing so we're going to get to take a look at it now. I'm just kind of playing what to send here. So I think I end up discarding the Oliver in my hand. I have Oliver and Renaud in my hand. So I think I discard... Let's see. Yep, so we discard Oliver. Uh, I get to look at his hand and the guest guy... Watch this, guys. Just watch this. Watch what he shows me. Nibiru, Dolphin... Or Nibiru, Skullmeister... And for Ben Droplets. So we go ahead and we get rid of the Skullmeister, burning him for 500. But now we know we have a Nibiru and a Droplets coming. So we can play around the Droplets, no big deal. And we can actually play around the Nibiru as well. This is why, like I said, like you don't have to play Phantom Knights in this deck. This deck can just generically play through this type of stuff anyway. So we're going to go ahead and use Heritage of the Chalice, grab Renaud. So I guess I opened Heritage, Heritage not Renaud, but I mean, I guess it is what it is. We're going to go ahead and special on Renaud, grabbing back the Oliver. And then we're going to go ahead and make Herald here with. All, uh, Renaud and the Dolphin. There we go. So now, Harold is our fifth summon. And we're off to the races, guys. We are just straight off. Uh, and we're going to be able to play under the protection of the Herald. Not even, like, no fear whatsoever. Uh, at this point, I kind of am thinking he's playing gu uh, Guru, the Gluru. Uh, however, you know, his hand did not give me any sort of information on what he's playing, except for he is playing Droplets, Nibiru, and Skullmeister, and Call by the Grave. But we're going to go ahead and do our typical combo line here, where we're going to go ahead and go into Isold. Go ahead and use Isolde's effect to add, I believe, a Gearfried. Yes, so we get Gearfried for the follow-up. And then we'll go ahead and use Isolde's effect, paying the cost. I can't quite remember what I uh, pay here, but uh, anyway, guys, go ahead before we get too far along in the video. Please remember, if you guys want to help support the channel, you can do so by checking out the links down in the description down below. Uh, becoming a member, guys, I stream directly to YouTube. That is my place to go. I have memberships that are less than a Twitch sub, so if you guys want to help support the channel, go ahead and do that. Check out the store, follow the links down below, check out our sponsors, everything like that, etc. Your Playmat, Ultra Pro, and of course, check out the uh, TCG Player affiliate link down below. Uh, but as you guys can see, we're going to make a Roradon. Roradon's going to bring back out the, or bring out the three tokens. The tokens, uh, then Despot's going to trigger. And I was kind of playing if I could OTK through this, but it would really depend on when he wanted to fire off the Nibiru, since, you know, Harold's just chilling out there. He's probably waiting for the most opportune time. And in my play line, as you guys will see here, I go for Power Tool. Power Tool is going to, you know, get us a Equip Spell. And then, so, like, my play, here was my thought process. My thought process was, okay, I don't know when and or if he's going to fire off this Nibiru. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a Savage, and then once the Savage is established, I'm just going to go ahead and use that Herald and make a Charles. But you'll see what he. Uh, but you'll see what happens here. So he shuffled it up. Uh, so he asked me to read Coltwing, and this is where I kind of like was like I got kind of brain, or not really brain, but like tunnel visioned. I was like, oh, I could DDR back Coltwing, but then I was like, whoa, whoa, wait, I can't because Call by the Grave negates its effect, so I can't really do that. Uh, so he ends up giving me, I forget what it was. I think it was DDR. So I'm contemplating what to do next. Uh, I, this right here is where I'm thinking uh, if I go ahead and banish two for Phoenix Blade, get back Gimba, you know, pitch, use DDR, pitch Gimba, or pitch the Phoenix Blade to grab back the Gimba. I can go ahead and make Roland, Roland's effect during the end phase. And then I can go ahead and special summon the Oliver that I can add or the Oliver that I search to be able to summon out uh, Savage before I go into the Charles play to make sure I'm still protected from that Nibiru. Uh, but I'll go ahead and reveal Oliver pitching the Phoenix Blade. And right here I go ahead and um, make the Savage. And uh, the reason I want to do this is because I didn't want to, like, give him any sort of opening. So Savage Effect is going to activate to equip the Halley Fibrax for my graveyard. He's asking me to read uh, Savage form. I just tell him it's Omni Negate. It negates activations. It does not destroy, though. 
And I attempt to equip the uh, Hell of Fibrex here, but but he's going to be like, okay, on Savage Effect, activate Nibiru, and I want to chain Herald, equipped in the Savage. So uh, right now, uh, that kind of foils my plan a little bit. I don't really, like, I was hoping to get out Charles because Charles plus Savage is very oppressive and very, like, very powerful. Uh, so I'm kind of like, man, what can I do here? I have yet to use a Roar Dance effect because I didn't tribute anything because I, you know, Coltling was gone. So go ahead and use the Aurora Dawn, I believe here. Yep, Aurora Dawn, tribute one, tribute the token to destroy the set card. We find out we're playing against a variant of Shadals. And this is going to be very interesting for you guys that like it. You guys have to watch this. And I'm going to explain to this why I do this. So I go Living Fossil, bring back Herald. So for those people who do not know, why would you do that? Herald's effects are negated. That is incorrect. When Herald is one of those cards that when you tribute Herald's, you can tribute to activate the effect of Herald, but it resolves in the graveyard. It's one of those few cards that do this. And the reason I know that you can do this is I got it confirmed by multiple judges that if your opponent activates Dark Ruler no more and you have Living Fossil back out the Herald, you will still have a negate under living under dark ruler because living fossil is already negating herald's effect so dark ruler cannot negate herald's effect so you can still activate the herald as an interruption this has been confirmed by multiple judges if you guys are doubting i highly just recommend just asking your own judges and stuff like that and uh, we go off into the next game so now i know i'm playing against shadals and i can only assume it's either shadals dogmatic invoked invoked shadals eld you know just one of the many variants that shadals could possibly be playing so, of course, I, do, I assume he's going to want to go first again. So, of course, right now, I know what Ushudal's play that's one hindrance to me is the Schism. And Schism is going to be probably the one card that they set. So, of course, I decide to side in all my back row, which means three Titty Twisters and a Harpy's Feather Duster are going right in. Because I'm not too worried. Like, Infernobles just have a really good time playing through certain boards here. Uh, I am powering four. He's powering eight. I have yet to do my research. I know like some other Twitch streamers and stuff like that was saying power. Well, if you power eight, you have the ability to stack your deck in some way where the probability of you getting your side deck cards are higher. So like that's how come you should ask people not to power eight. Uh, however, I have yet to see that problem. I have yet to do the math myself, but it's a very interesting like concept, you know. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and fire it off. He's going to go first and he is going to show me Nadir Servant. This this card's pretty, pretty annoying if you ask me. Like I have seen so many games... I've seen like so many games be won by just Nadir Servant, right? You just completely out the board, correctly play, and then your opponent top decks Nadir and they're right back in it because they send Entis, Entis pop, special Ecclesia, Ecclesia gets floor, just and then it snowballs and snowballs just like that. But we're gonna see him dump App Cologne to add a schism, and he's gonna pitch, I believe that is a dragon. Or that's a Squamata. It must be a Squamata. You guys got to excuse me because I'm watching this on my uh, iPad so I can edit it and everything. So it's a little bit tiny of a screen. Well, maybe I can enlarge it. No, I cannot. Never mind. He's going to... Yeah, it must have been Squamata. Squamata send Wendy. Wendy effect to summon out from the deck. He's going to normal summon Ecclesia. Ecclesia, he's going to grab... I believe he goes for Maximus right here. I probably would have gone for Punishment or Fleur de Lis. Uh, I actually really do like the Dogmatica stuff. I actually do plan on picking up this deck since it came out in the 10s, and I want to do like a weird spellbook variant of it. I'm pretty excited to kind of work with that and bring it to you. And, uh, I mean, let's be honest, Fleur de Lis is a beautiful card too. Like, who wouldn't want to play that card if you could play it? So he uh, does Maximus Effect. I send Omega and Dweller because I know I'm just going to be able to put Omega and Dweller right back uh, using Omega's Effect. And uh, he sends... I don't think he sent... I'm surprised he didn't send the Ashen Dragon, but maybe he's not playing it. I'm not sure. I don't know his deck list. But he sends IP and something else. Yeah, see, it seems very weird to do that. And uh, the poor guy sets one card, and straight up, uh, when he passes, he's like, don't draw uh, Twin Twisters. And that is exactly the card that I drew. But I wanted to play. I wanted to test a little bit more. I wanted to see, because, you know, playing round one, I didn't really get to see, you know, too much of how much, like, what kind of player he is. So I decided to test the waters here and not just shotgun the Twin Twisters. I want to see like how he reacts and how like how much he understands in my deck. So I just go ahead and you go Deerendal, Deerendal effect. He lets it go through. I go ahead and add Oliver. And I think my hand is something like Red Layer and Connector again. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and see the special summon of Red Layer. Which I'm, I was actually kind of shocked he didn't fire off uh, Schism right now. Because, you know, I've already done my one special summon. Now would be the perfect time to fire it off. But... He was asking what red layer did, and I'm just explaining to him that if there was another red layer in the graveyard, I'd get an effect, but right now he's just a body. Normal summon connector. Attempt to activate connector's effect, and he's going to flip over schism, and I'm going to chain the titty twisters, pitching 
the fire flint lady for cost and he's like oh my gosh and i just i didn't have the heart to tell him i ripped it right off the top it just i really i really didn't but i think we're gonna see so i go ahead and go dolphin effect pitching gear free from my hand i sacrificed the gear free i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that meister again but now he has triple tax and hedgehog and triple tax is what i am scared of I was not too worried about Forbidden Droplets during game one, just simply because I knew I was going to have his hand resources so low that um, he wasn't going to be able to do Droplets. But now Tactics is what's scaring me, because if Tactics stays and I like set up any kind of board, he can actually more than likely break my board with Tactics or draw more cards, which means more cards I have to negate, stuff like that, etc. So mission one right now is get rid of Tactics. That is the goal. That is what we want to do. So we're going to try our best to do it. And we have more than enough for full combo. But I know he has Hedgehog, and I know Hedgehog gets an effect when it goes with the Graveyard, so I didn't want to, like, do any more Dolphin Loops or anything like that. I didn't want to get, have the Hedgehog gain a more advantage. But we're going to go ahead and go into his ult, summon Gimba, make the Halle Fibrax. Halle Fibrax bring his Colt Wing. And then we're going to go ahead and fire off the Dolphin here, or fire off Connector to bring back Dolphin. So we get that level 3 to have the correct level of when we go uh, Aurora down here. You don't really have to do this, I just choose to do it because I can just go, like, right here and go ahead and make the... Riser. Riser will go ahead and send a red layer. Red layer, and that will reduce its level down to two. And then we're off to the races. Tribute two for Coltwing. Coltwing comes out, summoning out the two tokens. Despot, come on back. Go ahead and make Balmug. We'll go ahead and synchro off the token and Riser for Roland. Roland's effect during the end phase, of course. To go ahead and make myself an enemy form. And then Roland will equip the Balmug. And then Charles will just destroy the Balmug. Floating back out Coltwing for a second time. And now I'm just kind of, I'm going to go ahead and use Omega now to put back Omega and the Dweller, just so they're already there. And I was kind of contemplating, like, maybe further through the combo, I might have the ability to put up a Dweller, which would be a pretty big blowout against the Shadal package of his deck. But we're going to go ahead and make Power Tool, revealing the three. Oh, I actually, I don't reveal these three, uh, simply because I just remembered that early on I already used Durandal. So I go ahead and reveal the 2 DR and the 1 Living Fossil. I sometimes forget that too. I'll, the first thing I, if the first thing I normally do is Durandal, I'll forget that I do it, and then I'll be like, oh, wait, can't, I don't want to do that. So he ends up rolling a dice. He ends up giving me, I believe, Living Fossil. I think that's what he gave me. Not too sure. Contemplating what I can do now. I know he has a set card, and I, I know what's set to. I think it's Dragon, the one that lets you draw to. Go ahead and fire off Oliver. We're going to go ahead and make... Savage. Savage will go ahead and equip the uh, Halle Fibrax. And I always go for Halk because I want the Azold in the graveyard in case I need to fire off Phoenix Blade or we get into that grind game. Uh, but right here, I, I'm really contemplating what I can do. I think that I was kind of thinking I could bring back the Gear Freed and just, you know, attack and suck and attack and suck up a monster and have a negate. Uh, but I really, that tactics is what scared me because as soon as I fire off an interruption, he could, as soon as he baits the Savage, he could tactics and he could take like Charles, he could take Gear Freed, he could take, you know, you name it. So I ended up Living Fossil back the uh, Oliver, and I could have made Dweller here as well. But again, as soon as I'd fire off Dweller, he could Tactics me, and I did not want that. So instead, I decided to go for Omega and try to rip that Tactics out of his hand. Because right now, you know, Charles is like, Charles is going to have an interruption. We're going to have the entire field is going to be non-targeting. Savage is going to be able to sit there and negate any problematic card he has. I know what's in his hand. I know it's Tactics and Hedgehog. And then, like, you know, that's where, like, when you play Infer Nobles, you've got to really remember what is in the hand. That is super important when you're playing this deck, because if you forget what's in the hand, you can misplay. So if you guys were in the live stream, of course, if you guys weren't and you missed it, go ahead and check it out. They're always uploaded on YouTube, so you guys who miss it or in different time zones can always catch the live streams. I'm constantly telling myself, tell myself it's Hedgehog Tactics, Hedgehog Tactics. Even in my mind, I'm going Hedgehog and Tactics. And I go ahead and enter into the battle phase. I attack over Ecclesia for damage, but Ecclesia can't be destroyed by an extra deck monster. Forgot about that, so I decided to go ahead and use the Omega. And I actually forgot that apparently Maximus has a huge booty. I thought it was like 2,000 or something like that. No, it's like 3,000. So I ended up walking right in that for 200. Uh, so I end up banishing for Omega, and I hit the tactics, which means, boy, we're in it. So I know the last card in his hand is Hedgehog. And I know, like, I can pretty much negate anything he kind of does. So I go to the end phase and resolve Roland, sending DDR to go ahead and add the Gear Freed. And then I end phase, Charles will pick up Metal Silver and equip from the deck the Oliver. 
And there we go. Everything is non-targetable. So people have a lot of like, like some people do not like understand in a way like what this means. If you have a monster spell or trap that targets one monster on the field, you can only target the equipped monster. And since Charles is equipped by Oliver, you cannot target the Charles. So that is exactly, um, that's where we are right now. That's just all that he has to understand is like, as long as it targets a monster, can't do it. So he goes ahead and dumps down, uses Maximus. I end up sending Unicorn and Dweller, you know, just free real estate. Uh, Dweller I didn't really need. If As long as my Aerodon stays around, I'm going to be able to whack over everything by making access code. He's just contemplating his plays now because he knows Savage has a negate. He knows uh, Charles has a pop. He just has to play, you know, like correctly, you know, I guess. Like he, I don't know if there was a way for him to actually beat this because Omega's coming back. I have Gear Freed for a follow-up. But I do not know if there was a way for him to actually out this board because like Charles, like I said early in the previous uh, game, Charles and Savage apply so much pressure along with the equipped lock, you know, like that non-targeting lock. It's a lot of pressure and like that's that's where like people are like, you need unlimited negates. You, you really don't need unlimited negates. Uh, just two to three interruptions, perfectly timed interruptions, and maybe like a little soft lock with like Dwell or something like that. That's kind of all you need. But more importantly, I'd say the follow-up is really important too. The fact that Gear Freed is going to come down and he's going to touch down, it's going to be, you know, really problematic. But so he goes Squamata, and I think Squamata sends Falco. And this is where I have to check to see if Falco actually targets, but Falco I don't believe targets. So yeah, so he's going to send... Squamata, Squamata, he, and then he's going to be looking at that Falco, and I have to, like, read it and everything. It does target, but only for, like, the flip effect, not for the uh, other effects. Just contemplating, so he's going to go ahead and send the Falco. And I think Falco's effect is going to activate. He's going to try and fire off Prosperity, but he's going to go ahead and banish a Shuffle Up so he can do this Prosperity, but that's okay. Because if we're going to negate Prosperity, because we know both, we know he has Hedgehog in his hand, plus one unknown. So like, we got to prevent him from getting, drawing into anything he's sighted in. So that's the game plan. As soon as he fires off Prosperity, we're negating it with Savage. And then I know his head card is Hedgehog, so that means he has to, I, I like, I, I'd get truly punished. Well, no, I don't think I would, because I do, I do the math. If it was Shadal Fusion, he would already have activated it. So it's clearly a dead card or, you know, some, something that's not that great. So we're going to go ahead. He's going to, you know, banish for cost the Pot of, he's going to use Pot of Extravagance, banish, not Pot of Extravagance, Pot of Prosperity. There we go. Banish for cost, and then I'm just going to negate it with Savage. He sets one more card, sets another card, which I know is Schism because he added it back. Uh, end phase, Charles' effect is going to equip Durandal, and then Charles is going to destroy one card on the field, which I'm going to go and hit the Schism and get it out of the way. And then we draw for turn. So we are off to the races now. Uh, I go ahead and I believe I normal summon Connector. No effect of Connector, because there's no need to, but I just go ahead and make access code. Access code is going to become 53. And then I actually remember when I go to Banish that the Omega comes back, so he gets his tactics back. And then I want to Banish one for... The access code, banish two for access code, getting rid of the uh, Dogmatica stuff. And I should have, I see this is where I messed up. He's going to use Falco's effect to reset itself. And I should have already summoned Gear Freed here to have this negate, but I don't, sadly. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use uh, Roland's effect to equip the Charles. Charles will go ahead and destroy the Falco that just came back. So then I only have to stop the card that he has uh, set, which is going to be really easy with Gear Freed, because Gear Freed can just come out. So whatever I attack over, I can negate with Gear Freed. So Omega will smack, he'll attempt to fire off Hedgehog, and we will negate it. But uh, that is it. So that is it, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching, and stay healthy, stay safe.